Hello and welcome once again to the Bible Research Guide at the Feet of Jesus. It's a pleasure to once again be able to share a new topic with you. However, before we do this, let us ask the Lord to join us by praying. Our dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing us to once again study your word. I know I want to ask you to help us to understand today's topic and what the steps are to have inner peace and to live happily. Help me to get to know you better. In the name of Jesus, amen. Today's lesson is entitled, Four Steps to Inner Peace and Happiness. Where can we find peace and happiness? Every human being longs for genuine peace and happiness. But is it possible to find that in material things like amusements, tribute, sex, drugs, or alcohol? Certainly not. These are false sources. The well-known actress, Marlene Moreau, once said to a well-known journalist, I am admired by beauty. I have money. I lack nothing. But I have never been happy. However, does this peace, happiness, mean not having problems? There was once a painting contest on the subject, peace. Now, many artists submitted their works. Some depicted a peaceful morning, others a quiet sunset, and other similar subjects. However, the first prize was awarded to a picture showing a turbulent waterfall, which fell abruptly over the rock of the cliff, creating a thick cloud of mist. Leaning halfway over the waterfall was a tree, and on the branch, a robin had built its nest and was tripping away happily. Truly, the best concept of peace is the one that is experienced, not when circumstances are favorable, but amid the noise of the storm. The robin was perched by the branch of a tree that was rooted on a rock, stretching over a thundering waterfall. Up there, nothing could happen to the bird. Such should be the peace of him who trusts in God. In our search for happiness, we long for success, for strength, for love. Someone we can trust, someone to love us without dis disappointing. How can we find peace with God, the security of his forgiveness, and reassuring steady hope? How can we be certain that we will obtain eternal life if we die today? What is the key to finding peace and happiness? What is the name of this key? We can find it in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is not amusing something to having an uncertain opinion for example i think the sun will rise tomorrow or i think this or that may happen or i am mere affirmation for example i am the path to death even though i know the way to salvation and guide others to it i do not walk in it is that faith what is true faith hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen Faith is unwavering trust in God's promise, to believe in God and His Word, to know to trust and to surrender to Him someone, but not just anyone. We should have genuine faith in Christ, the author of life and the Bible. Let us see four steps to define faith. Let us remember that verse in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, that says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us see the first step. To know Jesus. What is knowing Jesus related to? John 17 verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. A man once awake in the middle of the night with a terrible headache, in the darkness, he picked up a box containing pills and took one, thinking it was aspirin. However, the pills happened to be rat poisoning. The man died because he believed in something, but he was wrong. It could be said that he died because he had faith. But we can know Jesus through his word according to John 5.24. Who is Jesus? Let us see some details. The eternal Son of God according to Matthew chapter 16 verse 16. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
He is also the Creator, as it tells us in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3 and 14, and Colossians 1, verse 16, which says, All things were made by Him. Jesus is the legislator, as is told us in both Nehemiah 9, 13 and 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. And gave us them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments. Jesus is the Savior. Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says, He came to seek and save that which was lost. He is also our friend. John 15 tells us, Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. It's so nice to see Jesus to call us his friend. He is also a mediator. The book of Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He is also Lord and God and King. Revelation tells us, For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Jesus is also a judge. In Acts 10 verse 42 it says, It is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. What has he done for me? Firstly, he became man. Philippians 2 verse 7 tells us, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He also took guilt. He took my guilt. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. A mischievous child once stained the papers of the teacher's desk with an ink. When the teacher came and discovered the damage, he demanded that his class tell him who was guilty. Spencer, a child shouted. Spencer, come here, the teacher, teacher ordered with the taking a rod into his hand. Two students had the same last name because they were brothers. The older student stood up without a word, stoically received painful punishment. Suddenly, the younger brother stood up crying. Teacher, stop beating him. He is not guilty. I was the one who did it. The teacher stopped and asked the older brother, Why did you take the punishment without pleading your innocence? Because he is younger and weaker and is a little sick, and he answered the boy. The teacher was really moved by this reply hugged the boy and said, You have done a great Christian deed, young boy. Christ did this for you and for me. God bless you. Jesus died in my place for my sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 tells me, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Yet he is also resurrected from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He intercedes for me. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He promised to come back and take me with him. The verse in John 14 verse 3 tells us, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Let's see the second step, which is to trust in Jesus. A ship was once sailing on the high seas in the middle of a violent storm. Fear and anxiety was painted on every passenger's face. Some were crying, others were seasick. Amid all this commotion, a little child calmly played on the stairs of the ship, quite indifferent to what was happening. When a passenger saw him, he approached him and asked how he could be so calm. Are you afraid of the storm? No, sir, because my father is the captain, answered the child. When we know Jesus, we learn to trust him. Through difficult moments of our life, we should take all our hardships and sins to him. What is his greatest virtue? The most famous verse in the Bible, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because of his love, I will open my heart to him. I will trust him and I will tell him everything that worries me. Third step, to acknowledge our sin. What should his love lead us to? Romans chapter 2 verse 4 states, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? What should we do with our sins? In the book of 1 John chapter 1 verses 8 to 9 it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 55 verses 6 to 7 also tells us, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Call ye upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We do not need to do a great physical sacrifice, go on a pilgrimage, or take vows to be forgiven. Let us go to the fourth step, to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 states, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. What is the difference between accepting him as our Savior versus accepting him as our Lord? John 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Then as Savior, we need to believe that He died in my place. And as Lord, owner, boss, and governor, it means that we need to obey His commands. Let us say with Paul, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Now you will see that there is genuine faith and temporary faith, a true faith and a false faith. What is the difference between genuine and temporary faith? Genuine faith has to do with our, our entire being. For we are three-dimensional beings. The reason our mindset would truthfully desire to get to know Jesus, the heart, our feelings would want to trust Him, open our heart to Him. To know Jesus, the heart, or feelings, would want to trust Him and open our hearts to Him. Confessing our sins would be to love Jesus. And lastly, the will is the decision to be willing to obey Him. Genuine faith means surrendering to Him. For example, we may consult a physician, and even though he may make a precise diagnosis, telling us we need an operation, we sometimes decide against the procedure. We can believe his diagnosis, but that doesn't mean we underwent the procedure. One day, a famous tightrope walker strung a rope across Niagara Falls, announced that he would give a performance. Many people came to see the great performance. When the time came, the man asked the crowd to be silent and then, and then asked, Do you believe I can walk on this rope? Yes, said to the crowd. The man walked back and forth on the rope and the public applauded enthusiastically. Again, he asked them to be silent. Then he took a chair and put it on the shoulder and asked, Do you believe I can cross holding this chair? Another enthusiastic yes was heard. The man once again walked before, back and forth and the people applauded very loudly. He again asked the audience to keep quiet and then asked, Do you believe I can cross the falls with a man sitting on this chair on my shoulders without dropping him into the waters? The enthusiasm was great and the crowd answered, Yes! Then the man asked in all seriousness, Which of you will be the first volunteer to come and sit on the chair? Deep silence was heard and nobody volunteered. There are many people who act like this in their spiritual life. They say, yes, I believe in Christ. But they do not really believe in Christ. Can carry across the terrible falls of the world and bring them to safety, to eternal life. We do not need to be perfect to come to Christ. Let us go to him as we are, full of our defects so that he can clean us. 
He can cleanse us and change us. We should overcome our ego and let him come into our life. When our ego reigns, all other interests revolve around us. When Christ is in the throne of his, our hearts, our interests will be fixed on God. We should make a vow with him, a commitment of love, just like in marriage. What will the result be? What will we become through Christ? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Someone dropped a precious metal in the mud. When it is finally found, it was completely ruined. There were two ways to restore it. Either straighten it and fill it in the parts, were dented, or melt it down and make it over again. Which of the two ways will be easiest? What does God promise us regarding our sins? Micah 7 verse 18 to 19 says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us, he will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. We can rejoice in salvation, because he who was a son has life. What does he offer to every soul who accepts him? John chapter 14 verse 27 tells us, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That is to say that we will be reconciled to God. Some years ago in England, a wooden house caught fire. On the top of the floor of the house, a child was screaming and desperately crying, crying for someone to save him. But it was impossible to climb up to where the child was because the stairs had completely burned. Flames were coming out the window, preventing anyone from putting up a ladder to save the child. The only solution was the child to jump through the smoke and flames and for some loving arms to catch him and keep his body from hitting the ground. Still, how could a six-year-old child be persuaded to perform such a heroic act? The voice of the child's father was heard and the silent crowd ordered his son to jump without fear. The boy hesitated and said, Daddy, I can't hear you, but I can't see you. Where are you? My son, I am here waiting for your jump. I'm afraid, Daddy. But if you say so, I will jump. Catch me. Remarkably, the child jumped. And after a few seconds, he was safe and sound in the father's arms. Similarly, our invisible God, whose wonderful works we can see through creation, is asking us to trust his holy word, to acknowledge the wonderful promises it contains by making their own, and to accept his offer of salvation through Christ Jesus. God wants to make you happy. He wants to forgive your sins and give your, you salvation. He wants to call you his child today. The question is, will you allow him? Do you accept Jesus Christ in your life as your Savior and Lord? Now is the time to confess the this to God in prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I thank you for the message that you have allowed me to hear today. I accept you in my heart as the Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sins. Forgive all the errors I have done in my past. Lord, I want to have a new life. I want to always have you in my heart. May you sit on the throne of my heart and may all my desires and interests be according to your will. Help me make this a reality. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord says that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He is with us now, listening to this prayer. If you've done it with all your heart, then the Lord will also hear the desire, the deep desire in your, of your heart. The desire that by faith, Jesus may dwell in the heart's throne. The next lesson, how to improve our personality. We all want to have an attractive personality, but we realize that we need to change many things in our character. How then can we achieve this? How can we have the certainty of God's acceptance, the certainty of his forgiveness of a new life of triumph? 
The secret is knowing the four miracles and the three joys in life of believers. Have you heard of them? This is the topic summarizing God's plan for you. It contains the good news that will fill your soul. May God bless you richly. If you still have questions, then don't hesitate to write us at info at biblewell.org. Once again, that's info at biblewell.org.